Hey guys, Mike here at Patriot Coin Rings. Okay, so we got a, a special little video here for you today. It's off a beaten path of uh, doing coin rings. Um, I've got a, a really good client, uh, Lindsay Wilson. Uh, so shout outs to uh, Waverly, Ohio. Uh, and she sent sent me back, actually, what she had ordered online. Now, as most of you know, I, I make a lot of different rings. Coin rings are definitely my specialty, but I definitely do a lot of like tungsten milling and titanium and deer antler inlays with dinosaur bone and, and uh, uh, deer antler is a very popular one, elk, um, I, I do a lot of different types of stuff. I've even done megalodon teeth, uh, ivory uh, in, in rings. And she had ordered this uh, deer antler ring uh, that I made it and it, it was really, really nice. I mean, it came, it came out gorgeous. Uh, but she came up actually with a really good idea. This, I believe, for her. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty positive it's for her husband. I think it's their, their uh, wedding uh, band. Um, and and all of all the ones that I've currently got online are all the silver. And she just wanted to see a different color. She wanted black. And uh, don't know why it never really dawned on me to to do it. I, I do it on all my other rings. And thought, okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get some tungsten and, and do it upright. Uh, so I'm going to show you through the process here, and we're going to kind of like go through it pretty quickly. Um, some things are going to be kind of skipped as as we go forward, but I thought you'd be able to see this process while I get to show her, you know, the ring that's being made because she was actually generous enough to send me some deer antler rings. Um, or I said deer antler rings, but rather uh, deer antlers. So um, I like that, and that's cool. I, I love taking on uh, custom jobs, and uh, Lindsay, we're gonna take care of you. We're gonna do real good. Uh, we're gonna go through the process here and give you a really fast overhaul. So let's go ahead, and we're gonna uh, start over on the mill and on the lathe, and uh, and get started with the ring because we're gonna have to um, remove all of this and start from scratch basically uh, because I want to bake the uh, I want to go ahead and get the powder coating on there right and bake it and get that all just set up before we actually do the antler so let's go ahead and take care of that right now all right now we got your ring in place um, I've just got to get, taken out all the uh, deer antler uh, that was in the previous one and we're going to go ahead and grind this out so that we get a little bit wider opening. Now we got your ring already. It's, it's, it's all been cut out, ready for a uh, new hour. All right. Some good pieces of antler there. So let's see. 
you know what, this is really good for actually a lot of people to see. So in short, um, I get a lot of questions about, um, they, you know, people requesting dark antler, white antler, and, and yeah, you're going to get both. You're going to sometimes get brown or an orangish look. It all depends on the antler. Every, every antler is different. I want to show you how, for instance, with this antler right here, it's very similar to like the kind I've had. Uh, this doesn't have nearly as much black as I would normally have. But this is a great example of why um, you're going to see a lot more white than you are going to be seeing darker colors. Um, I'm going to be taking slivers off of here, literally just slivers. And all those slivers, think of it as like skin. Uh, I'm going to be stripping those down, stripping them down, and I'm going to get little pieces uh, that are put, put together all the way around that end lane. And then it's going to get a clear coat polish all the way around. It's actually, believe it or not, it's a boat sealer um, that gives it that glass look. Then it'll have a final polish. Um, and of course, this is all after powder coating your ring and everything, um, which is the main reason why we're doing this. But uh, then it gets a jeweler's coat after that. Now, normally I wouldn't jeweler's coat the metal, but because we're going to powder coat it, I'm going to be I'm going to put jeweler's coat over the entire thing. So I want you guys to know that if you guys do uh, request a custom made ring to be made, uh, that 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 powder coating should be uh, uh, coated as well. All right, but you can see I'm not able to really take anything off this top section to get. A real nice brown look and I've been asked by people you know hey can you can you do that for me so it's this color um, around the sides I get more people that want white than anything black is a second most and I've only been asked a couple times but and it's usually by hunters um, but it's you can't you really can't do nothing with this because this part's got to be scrapped I'm gonna have to core this entire thing out and as you can see it's almost pure white and that's just simply all we could do with it unless we're gonna fake it um, and now you never know what you're gonna get out of this because even though that's all white you can see the rings in there see that ring and I try to get some of that ring in there a little bit of that orange in the in the center there and um, and when I put a clear coat over the top of that it will actually darken up and come out and so that's where you get you'll see white but then all of a sudden black and on the ring so now you get get the idea so that's what we're going to be doing right now we're going to go ahead and shave these down so that we can get some nice strips to put on on your ring i'm going to use a smaller piece right here because the bigger it is the more white it is and i want to try to get some coloration in there for you so we're just going to start by stripping this down. See the little piece right there? These are the little pieces that make up the antler ring. I gotta change my blade out. Let me come back. I gotta, I gotta change this blade out a little bit. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do this because it's gonna take away from you being able to see what I'm doing, really. But in short, I gotta catch all those flying pieces of bone. I just kind of use, use tinfoil as a backstop. Okay, now we got the majority of the color off and that's where I'm going to uh, be able to use a lot of the color for uh, your ring. Uh, we're going to get the white now. And for this we're going to be using the H100E. Um, on an 8 inch coping saw and there's your coping saw and even though that looks like one blade that's actually a, about oh probably 50 60 blades in there there we go okay that's how thin it's like a piece of hair 
That's actually a blade, though. All right, let's get that on our clipping saw. All right, I used the magnifying glass, and now, now pull it back, and we're going to tighten up this side right here, and let's cut away. This is where we're going to get our bigger pieces, and I need um, a piece of tin foil to catch all that stuff again, a piece of paper, something like that. Just put it underneath there, because it's all going to be falling down in there, and I'm going to go, if you guys do this, go a little bit wider than what you're going to put in your inlay because afterwards you're going to mill it off. That's why I try to explain to people, I just, um, you know, by coincidence, I had another customer just call up and want, wants me to do the same thing for her antler ring. And coming up with the price is kind of hard, because I, I know it's, you know, I put these on sale and I, I'll put them up there for under a hundred bucks, but then it costs nearly as much to colorize it because I got to do all this work. This is easily going to be about three, four hours, that I, and so, believe me, you're going to get a lot of cutouts. All right. Let's see. Okay, so we've got our first piece right here of the white antler, and uh, I got several of the shavings of the brown. And we're going to go ahead and piece those all together and basically use a super glue epoxy to put them uh, all around the tungsten band. Um, but first, uh, we got to go, now that I got that all set up, uh, we got to go over to the powder coating and let's get the powder coating done. Okay, make sure that you uh, use a heat sink tape. Uh, this is heat protective, uh, it'll go in the oven, it won't melt. Uh, to keep keep all the uh, powder coating from going on the inside of the uh, groove just like this other ring right here uh, That I haven't started yet. Uh, we don't want we don't want to fill that in because as the powder coating starts to melt on it uh, It'll actually flow down into the section and you won't be able to get your deer antler in afterwards So make sure you get this all cut up right Okay, so the tape is just as high as the ring it is, is itself. That's going to prevent it from uh, melting over into here. So let's go ahead and get it inside of the powder coating box, and uh, you can use any kind of uh, cardboard box to get that done. Um, I got my powder coating machine from um, Harbor Freight. If you guys are looking for one, um, didn't pay too much for it. I think I think it was only like 150 bucks or something like that, somewhere around there. I don't know if that was before the paint or whatever, but then I bought all my paints and stuff on Amazon. Um, all I'm doing is I'm just checking to make sure that I got this as straight as possible. Okay, so I got a little sidetracked and I didn't record um, spraying the, the, the black powder coating onto the uh, ring, but as you can see, it's in there baking. And... Um, if I have to put a second coat on, I'll record that. But uh, for those interested, uh, we're going at about 350 to uh, 400 degrees. I'm trying to keep it really light. Uh, I'm only going to go for about four minutes uh, right now, just so that we start getting it to uh, run. And then I'm going to spray it down with some air to cool down the ring. And um, after that, uh, if it needs more, we'll, we'll do a little more. Okay, so this came out really nice, and you can see how the black's all the way around. Um, now, I'm going to show you something here. If you take a look, at where, wherever your your uh, electrode is that that's, uh, has a electricity uh, that runs through it, often it'll leave a little silver mark in there, and that's why I said we'll probably have to do a second coat anyway. Um, so, yeah, you'll still get to see that process. All I do is I kind of just reverse that now and I have that silver section on the bottom. I'm just going to lightly spray that just to give it a little bit of perfection. Uh, step on our electrode. Let's see. First let's get this all wired up. And I should be in a box, but 
This ain't gonna take much. all we want. I'm going to hang this back up here again. And we're going to give it just another three, four minutes in, in the oven at 350 degrees. I can go ahead and put my tools away while I'm at it. I'll be all done with those. I'm going to go ahead and uh, right now I'm just going to go ahead and blow down the area and get that black powder off my tool bench and everything. Okay, so we'll come back uh, as soon as this is finished up. Uh, it's going to take another three minutes, and uh, then I just got to let it cool down. Uh, make sure you use gloves when you take it out. You take it to a cool place. Use your air if you want to uh, cool it down a little bit faster. Just kind of give it a little breeze. And when that paint is running down around the sides, that'll uh, keep it from dripping and creating uh, drip marks. And uh, we'll come right back. Uh. 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 Subscribe.